Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you how to round trip from Adobe Premiere Pro 2020 to DaVinci Resolve 16 and then back to Premiere. Let's get started. All right, so here I am in Premiere Pro 2020 and I'm going to first show you guys sort of the cut and dry round trip workflow. We're just moving from Premiere to DaVinci and back again. Um, and if you look at my sequence here, I've got a pretty basic timeline. I've got just the video track and just some audio, no transitions, no text, no effects, nothing. So what we're gonna do to get started moving this into DaVinci Resolve is go up to File, go down to Export, go down to Final Cut Pro XML, we're gonna click that. And now we just need to save this XML. I usually keep it with my Premiere Pro project file. So whichever folder you have that, keep it together just to have a little bit more organized. We're gonna hit Save. And now we're gonna move over to DaVinci Resolve. So here we are, I've got DaVinci Resolve open. I'm inside the edit tab and we're gonna go over here on the left side, make a new bin, go ahead and call this whatever the name of your project is and then select it. Once you've selected it, go up to file, go down to import timeline, and we're gonna import XML. Now you just need to navigate through your computer and find where you saved that XML, here is mine. And once you found it, go ahead and hit open. And now DaVinci Resolve has opened up some settings from that XML. You're not gonna wanna change anything here, really. The only thing I deselect is use sizing information. And I deselect that because I don't want any of the reframing that I may have done in Premiere to translate into DaVinci because I prefer the stabilization from DaVinci and I want the full frame to work with when I do that stabilization. So if you also wanna stabilize in DaVinci, go ahead and deselect use sizing information. And once you've done that, go ahead and hit OK. So here we are, we have our timeline in DaVinci as it was in Premiere. And our next step is to color our project. So go to the color tab and then color your files as you would for your project. I've already gone ahead and done that. So once you're done, the next step is to go to the deliver tab. And now we're inside the deliver tab. We're gonna go up to our render settings on the top left. And you're gonna slide over to Premiere XML. Then down here, we're gonna browse for a folder to put those exported files to. I've got one here called CC Round Trip. Once you've made your folder, go ahead and select it. And then we're gonna look at the video settings tab here. So we want the highest possible quality from our exports. So you're gonna go ahead, if you're on a Windows machine, select MXF OP, go to DNX HR, and then select DNX HR HQX 10-bit. If you're on a Mac and you prefer to do ProRes, the equivalent to this would be ProRes 422HQ. Okay, now we're gonna select render at source resolution and use constant bitrate. In our advanced settings tab, we're gonna scroll down till we find force sizing to highest quality and force debayer to highest quality. We want the highest quality, so let's go ahead and select those. Okay, so we're done in the video tab, and now we're gonna move over to the audio tab. I do not export audio because I haven't made any changes to this audio. So there's no reason for me to have extra audio files. I already have the original audio files I'm just gonna use when I go back into Premiere. So we're not gonna export any audio. Okay, and now we're just gonna go into the file tab here and I use unique file names with a prefix. You can make it a suffix, but I do this because the XML is going to read these specific files and we don't want it to get confused with the original files uh, that you were using in Premiere. And this way it's just gonna translate quicker. Okay, so now we just go down to render entire timeline, add to render queue, and then start render. Great, so now that that's done, let's move back into Premiere. Okay, so we're back in Premiere and our last step here is gonna be pretty simple. We're just gonna make a new bin and you can call that whatever you want. So open up that bin and then you're gonna double click inside of it and navigate to the folder that you exported out of DaVinci. So whatever that folder was we browsed to earlier, you're gonna go in there and find the XML file that it exported. And once you've selected that, go ahead and open it. And it's going to import all of those colored profiles here as well as a sequence. So we're gonna double click that sequence and you'll see here it says cut and dry round trip resolved. So the one that says resolve is the one that has the colored profiles in it. And you'll see if I go between that one and the one that I had created in Premiere, you'll see that the one that has resolve is the one with the colored profiles. So if we're just doing a basic round trip Premiere resolve back into Premiere again, at this point you would go up to file and then export your project with your desired export settings. 
So real quick, I just want to show everyone what this process will look like if you're using any sort of transitions, effects, or titles on your sequence. So I've got a few things going on here. First thing is a camera blur that is keyframed to make it look like I'm pulling focus in on that flamingo. This is going to move into a transition into some text on a clip. That transition is here above that. Uh, and these clips have an effect on them that give it like a broken VHS look. And then I have just like sort of a standard transition between the shots here is a cube spin. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to export an XML, move it into DaVinci and see how all that translates. All right, so now I've got my transitions and effects sequence here in DaVinci, and there's a few things to take note. First, I'm not seeing that camera blur effect that was keyframed. Um, this transition here, the smooth one, doesn't show anything at all, so I can delete that. The text file here is just showing me media offline. That's no good. I'm going to delete that. The VHS effect that I applied is not showing either. Um, and all I'm seeing here is this cross dissolve, which is sort of a placeholder for that cube spin transition that I had in Premiere. And basically what's happening here is it's applying a transition, this cross dissolve, so that when I deliver the sequence out of DaVinci and back into Premiere, it's giving me all of those frames that I need in order to plug in that cube spin and not have any sort of issues with frames missing. So I'm going to go ahead and deliver this sequence, move it back into Premiere and take a look at what we got. So I'm back in Premiere. I've got my timeline here with the colored profiles, but I want my sequence to look exactly the way it did before with my transitions, with my effects and with my title. Super easy. So basically we're just going to go back to the sequence you were editing in. You're going to highlight all of the clips and you're going to offline them. Keep them on the disc. Now we're going to go back, right click and link the media. And basically you're just going to navigate to the folder that you made where you exported these clips out of. So here's mine. I've got display only exact name matches to sort of make it quicker to find it. You're going to hit OK and it's going to scrub that whole folder and replace all of your clips on your timeline with the colored profiles. And so here I've got my flamingo with the keyframed camera blur into the transition to the VHS, the cube spin with the text. So everything's here. And that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all you're going to have to do. The only thing that's going to make this process longer is if you have a longer sequence and you're going to have to offline and relink the rest of those. And that might take a little bit longer for it to do that. So that's pretty much it. If anyone has any additional questions or concerns, be sure to comment below and I would love to interact with you there. Also, if you enjoy editing and coloring tutorials like this one, make sure to like and subscribe because I'll be making more like this in the future. Be sure to click that little bell icon to get notified on any new uploads I have. And if you have any suggestions for future videos, I would also love to hear what content you all would like to see more of. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned.